This is just a basic recommendations video on uh, stuff for a general emergency supply system or electricity supply system. For any kind of basic system uh, where you don't have the room for affordable takeaway or you don't have one yet, I would like to have the ability to have a couple of lights that are a lot safer than um, uh, the oil lights that you see recommended a lot. Uh, a black start capable uninterruptible power supplies like these are generally a good thing as far as the first uh, basic step. Although you will want to get things like healer crap lamps like this. You will want to find ones that do not object to being run on square of electricity because very few of these uh, inverters are actual pure sign because they're intended loads for things like computers. The power supplies don't care. And plus any kind of abnormal effects it will only be for the couple of minutes that they're running on one of these. But you'll want to check to make sure that whatever loads will run safely on this. Now a black start, as you can see like this, you can see it's not plugged in. But you can see there, it powers on. And same with uh, this one. If you turn it on and then hit the test button, this one you have to use, use the test switch to uh, trick it to go into a black start, and if I hadn't cut the buzzer out, this would be screaming bloody murder with a stupid little beeper thing that they put in them. But, you can see that this one is black start capable, as is that one. But, this is really good as far as this little basic thing, or if you only need a little light somewhere, and you don't have big reserves of extension cords to be able to run a cable out to whatever it is, that you need the light or it doesn't make sense to do it because you only need it for a couple of minutes. Things like this are okay. Although for this you'd also maybe something like a 12 volt helicraft or a compact fluorescent lamp and a 12 volt battery. But then again, these are really only for circumstances where you're not expecting utility failure for more than a couple hours or what you do is you have your entire system broken down and stored so that um, it can't be fried by an electromagnetic pulse. And um, what you do is that if whatever electromagnetic com pulse comes and fries this, then you know that it's bad enough that you're going to need your system anyway. Uh, for uh, Generally for a non-black start capable uninterruptible power supply, you, that would generally be for any kind of load, like a cable modem or something that would always be supplied with electricity, although even then operation for weeks on end isn't super critical because the battery supplies for the... Uh, cable signal amplifiers only last for generally, in this, at least around here, only about six hours. And that because they use standard uh, equipment, that's probably what it's like in, mu in much of the country and probably elsewhere in the world. Um, for things like, um, for if you're going to run a system that is capable of much more like being able to function indefinitely, you're going to want a basic at least a basic photovoltaic supply system. And you should also learn how to do electrical wiring safely. Because then again, that should be just common knowledge, but unfortunately it doesn't. Uh, something like a photovoltaic module, or a couple modules like this, a 30 watt solar synergy one. Uh, for things like this, you're probably going to want to stay away with anything bigger than a 20 watt amorphous, or a about 80 watt um, crystalline cell module because uh, if you get much bigger than that they're very big and things like that would generally be for an application where uh, you're going to have the system al always set up and always operating and uh, of course the thing is that also with lots of the bigger modules they're also often anything other than 12 volts because for a basic 12 volt system like this um, you know, for a basic emergency supply system like this, 12 volt stuff is a lot easier to find. Like um, big Harbor Freight inverters like this, I got on sale for 100 bucks. This one was about 10 or 13 bucks on Amazon. That was about 16 bucks with a coupon on sale from Harbor Freight, and this one was about 40 something bucks a couple years back from uh, Water Club. Uh, these kinds of inverters, it's much harder to get them in 24 volts, and when you do, they're a lot more expensive because, again, there's all kinds of um, vehicle applications that are 12 volts, not many that are 24 volts, because lots of big trucks are 24 volt, but that, and aside from the few 12 volt, or 24 volt uh, emergency power systems, that's generally about the only place you're going to find these. These 
uh, 12 volt versions it's much easier to find so I go with uh, 24 volts or 12 volts and you'll also hear uh, it's one of these myths that um, 24 volts are a lot more efficient the efficiency gain especially with inverters like these which are all at least 90 percent efficient and this one which is 80 something percent efficient they aren't as efficient because again it takes a lot more work to generate the pure sign but that originates from the somewhat increased uh, switching losses like in the teardown video of the 1000 watt version uh, equivalent of this uh, you have somewhat higher switching losses in the MOSFETs for the uh, potential converters in this. This is uh, fairly similar to the other one except this has um, this is a 1200 watt version other than that it's identical and this one only has two receptacles on the front the other one has three but that originates in the uh, partly from that and partly because you need thicker cables for a 12 volt system but that's only because uh, a 12 volt system for a given size load the current's going to be double that of a 24 volt system at the same load but that's again only the size of the cable your system efficiencies are still fairly comparable in the case of the things like 12 volt flash, um, incandescent lamps the efficiency will actually be or the efficiency may in certain cases be slightly higher <coughs> but not always but and also you'll hear the myth like I've heard OBX Solwin say that uh, electricity only falls on the outside of the conductors that is something called the skin effect that only applies to alternating current and with 60 cycle alternating current that is about the outer third of an inch so you're able to get away with pretty much anything up to two thirds of an inch in diameter it's not going to be an issue and with direct current it's never going to be an issue but that really is only the case with radio frequency where it travels on the outside of the cable or for things like waveguides where there is no central conductor but then again that's getting beyond the scope of this video um, so yeah for any kind of basic system 12 volts is a lot easier and especially with things like a 48 volt system that's getting into electrocution range so I would avoid something like that because they only make sense if you've got a system where the inverter is the primary load um, yeah so the next thing you're going to want is a battery ideally this is just here as a demonstration battery you'd want something like golf cart batteries or marine deep cycle batteries because those are generally the best bang for your buck if you can get things like the roll serrette ones which are good for 20 years or more but again you get what you pay for they're very very expensive so unless you're given some or you win the lottery which you're an idiot to play if you do or you're just given some or you're coming to money by some way uh, those you're generally not going to be using encountering anything like that in a system like this um, so you're going to want at least a couple batteries especially like uh, you want at least probably half a dozen batteries if you're going to be using a bigger inverters like these because these are largely for things like power tool type applications or if you've got lots of computers or lots of lights or something other than that you'll be able to get away with these and even then these are good as backup inverters or for because they present a smaller um, uh, load these are generally for things like overnight lights you'd want smaller inverters like these these would generally be for like these would be good for power tools that use brush motors because those will run on anything with a root within a, a root mean square electrical potential of 120 volts including they'll run even run on direct current but that's only brushed universal motors induction motors will not operate properly on a, on a square wave inverters like these but they will work properly on a pure sign and also you also want to check as far as if it does have a, have a brush motor there still may be some fancy electronics and generally those object to operating on a, on a square wave electricity as will most or just about all drill battery charges because they're the other one that use a transformer which of course doesn't like the waveform from these or they'll use a uh, capacitor as a, a reactive current limiter and those really despise it and those you'll fly the uh, charger definitely the charger and possibly the battery so yeah um, these are much more uh, you can't use anywhere near as much as you can on these but these are a lot cheaper and they're more efficient because again it's just 
couple potential converters and an 8 bridge uh, and some control circuitry. This has a bunch more waveform sha shaping stuff. I, I have a, a GITS video of this one and then a GITS video of the 1000 watt version of this. They still work, both of them. So you should probably check those out if you don't know what, what goes on in an inverter. And then as far as like general loads, for basic emergency lighting, because that's what most of the systems are going to be used for, even ones that have the capability for more, is uh, ideally you should get um, like these Max Light uh, helicraps. These will be fairly reliable on on a, on a square of electricity. Some others, like my really, really old OSRAM lamps, those will work okay, but that's one thing you should check, is that if you don't, if you, if, you, uh, if you hook it up and it buzzes up normally, or if you have the ability to uh, have an oscilloscope and a current transformer you can me and you can observe the current waveform and it's really, really nasty, don't use any lamp that, uh, that um, will not operate properly on those, for obvious reasons. Uh, you can also use these super saver, like these uh, high efficiency aliters, like these are last from Sylvania super savers, but Philips has uh, similar, I think, EcoVantage uh, lamps, and you can also use regular GLS lamps. And remember, as far as lights, the same rules as far as uh, where you can and cannot use compact fluorescent lamps safely, those all apply even though the cost of your electricity is substantially higher with a affordable tech system like this because you're not going to save money, trust me. And uh, then for just general emergency lighting purposes, you have fixtures like this and this. You could have these as table lights and you could make or buy, which you should do if you don't know how to make one of these safely. Um, little extension cables like this, which is just some SPT appliance cable and, uh, and uh, attach a cord and plug and receptacle and when you get these you should get the ones like these that have screw terminals or if they exist uh, ones that have solder terminals those you can use I would stay away from insulation displacement connector because those suck I mean because there's, there's yeah bad fail or as my physics teacher would say okay and then for things like um, uh, and then for you could also use these for uh, temporary lighting like if you have some clamps like these, which you should have a couple of these anyway because they're really handy for stuff, is they're just little clip-on things like this is a bulk tube of them at Harbor Freight. I recommend buying these rather than the individual ones. I also want to get the really comedically huge ones because these are a much better buy. Unless for whatever reason you need uh, black ones, but I don't know. Maybe you might. Uh, I just have one of these. And for uh, circuit splitters, uh, these little cube taps, those are really useful. And if you have one of these hang hung up with uh, one of these, on like a light fixture, a beam or something, you can just plug in one of these uh, plug-in lamp holder thing where they just a little Nemo 115 plug on one end and a medium screw base on the other, just to put in a lamp or something. And you can use that as just a little hanging light. And those come in really handy and I actually have a couple fixtures in use that uh, use that during any kind of a grid failure. That's just a little basic and one thing you're going to want with your photovoltaic system is charge controllers. These are just uh, pulse width, this is just a cheap e EP solar pulse width modulation controller and this is just your standard infamous Harbor Freight shunt controller. These are perfectly okay for any kind of small system where you've got under 100 watts of modules or if you've got a mismatch modules like you just buy one then buy another and you don't care what you get. Because <coughs> maximum power port charge controllers, even though they do, you will get your full rated or close to your full rated uh, power of your photovoltaic array. They um, need at least uh, probably uh, a few hundred watts, with the exception of things like the BZ Products ones, which will uh, those will their p their minimum peak efficiency is 68 watts of modules. But those you're going to want matched modules, like all the same, same manufacturer, same model number, ideally same production lot. But uh, Although with, with maximum power point, uh, if it is designed for it, you can use higher potential ones, so you will have lower line losses in your module, in your array cable, and it will be somewhat cheaper because you can use thinner stuff.